Hey there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now AV1, that's the video codec, is one of those things that we always think is just going to come. It's just about to be there and it hasn't quite materialised. And there's an announcement here and an announcement there, but it doesn't really ever get to that point of mass adoption. Well, I think that time has now come. We're right on the edge, on the cusp of being ready for just about everybody to use. So if you want a refresher on what is AV1 and you want to know what's changed so it's now ready for mass adoption, please let me explain. Okay, so AV1 is now ready for mass adoption if you have the right hardware, that is. So if you remember two and a half years ago, I did a video about AV1, what is it? We had some things that we looked at, encoding the quality and so on. If you haven't seen that video, of course, I highly recommend it. But what were the conclusions that I made back then in May 2020? So remember we said a two hour video, 4K, would need about five terabytes of space and bandwidth. It was uncompressed, which is why we have video uh, compression. And AV1 is the latest codec. Previous ones, of course, included MPEG-2, H.264, H.265, kind of things you'd find on DVD, Blu-ray, and of course with modern day streaming. AV1 claims to be 30% better than H.264, and it's better at lower bit rates. Now, most codecs are covered by patents, and so you need to license them, and that's the case, for example, in H.264, H.265. However, AV1 is envisioned to be royalty-free and open source friendly. That means if you include it in an open source project, then you're not gonna get jumped on by the lawyers. But at the time, so this was two and a half years ago, encoding was painful. A 4K 15 second clip at 42 megabits per second. If you converted that in software to H.264, it would take a minute, so four times longer. If you were to do it in hardware, doing uh, NVIDIA have a hardware encoding some of their graphics cards, it would take 20 seconds, so almost real time. H.265 would take five minutes, and H.265 in hardware, same again, 20 seconds. But an AV1 conversion of software of that 15 second clip would take 10 minutes. So a 4K one hour movie would take 40 hours to encode, you know, a two hour movie would take 80 hours to encode, which means of course it was no good for consumers. It might have been useful for you know, companies like Netflix because maybe they'll convert their stuff and they could stream it to clients who would receive uh, AV1, but certainly not something I'm not gonna be going around converting my home uh, movie collection into AV1, those kind of conversion rates. But a lot has changed in two and a half years, so what has changed? First of all, is much better software. We've got Intel Scalable Video Technology for AV1, SVT, uh, AV1. We've got support from systems like Plex, Handbrake, FFmpeg, Open Broadcast Studio. They all now support uh, AV1 encoded files or encoding to uh, AV1. And now we have better hardware. So there's hardware encode has been built into the Intel Arc GPUs, into NVIDIA GPUs, GeForce RTX 30 series and upwards, AMD Radeon RX 7000 and upwards. Just want to remind you, you can follow me on Twitter and other social media networks. All the handles are here on the screen. And don't forget, I also have a monthly newsletter that covers everything I do here on Gary Explains, everything I do over on Android Authority. If you'd like to get that newsletter, go over to GaryExplains.com, type in my address, no spam, but you will get the newsletter. So what is Intel scalable video technology for AV1? Well, it's an AV1 compliant software codec, so software initially founded by Intel in partnership with Netflix. It was then adopted by the Alliance of Open Media, it's the, the group responsible for AV1, and it's licensed under a BSD3 clause. So there you go, very simple and easy to put into your open source software. It has a pure C implementation, so if you don't have uh, any extra accelerated uh, instruction sets like SSE2 uh, and so on, we'll talk about that in a second, then it will still work. It has a fallback to it, still, but it doesn't just say, oh no, I can't do this. It will still work. And it has got code in there to auto detect which instruction set you have. So it supports SSE2, 3, 4.1, AVX2, and AVX512. AVX2 is really the recommended minimum. However, it does cover all those other earlier cases. Now, as I mentioned, Plex, Handbrake, FFmpeg, and OBS all support it. Server and desktop clients for Plex are now available supporting AV1. And I was able to stream a 1080p AV1 movie to my web browser from a Synology DS 
2200 plus and it was doing that by doing real-time AV1 to H264 hardware accelerated transcoding and that worked fine uh, and if you I think if you use the desktop clients and the home theater client it will accept AV1 directly and just do the decoding on your machine so Plex is fully there with uh, AV1 support handbrake from version 1.6 adds AV1 encoding via the SVT and also via Intel uh, hardware if you have it FFM peg any version after 5.1 will permit full SVT AV1 functionality including the passing of parameters so FFmpeg really acts as a wrapper around uh, SVT and those two can now talk to each other uh, perfectly well and OBS added support for AMD AV1 encoding and for the Intel AV1 encoding on the respective uh, GPUs there so now you can do your screen recording or your streaming in AV1 and it will happen in hardware uh, or through the OBS software. So what about performance? Well, we were talking about 40 hours, 80 hours earlier on. So I took a two and a half hour 1080p movie encoding H.265. The Pure C encode, uh, which is on an Apple uh, MacBook Air M1. So that was using handbrake, took nine hours. So obviously that's not the best and not the fastest, but that was without any kind of acceleration available. And that's much, much better than the 40 hours and the 80 hours we were talking about before. So the software has obviously come on a long way. However, if you do have a Windows PC with an AVX2 compatible CPU, I was using an i9-9980HK and it took two hours. So slightly faster than real time. And if you have an NVIDIA card, I've got an NVIDIA Orin here. That's the Jetson Orin with a Lovelace GPU built into it. Do check out my video about that here on this channel. It could do it in 48 minutes. So obviously double, more than double uh, real time. So that was really quite good. And just talking about the files, the original H.265 file was 8 gigabytes at 7.5 megabits. This was a high quality uh, version of the movie. Uh, and the AV1 version is 1.7 gigabytes at 1.5 megabits a second so obviously a much smaller file size but here's the key when I looked at both of them side by side even in very difficult scenes I couldn't see any difference in quality so there you go you go down from 8 gigabytes to 1.7 gigabytes and yet you remain at the same quality so that's really really useful so what are the conclusions? Well, there's now wide support for AV1 decode, decode in hardware and software. The Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 now has hardware decode. MediaTek chips have had hardware decode since 2020. There's no support from Apple at the moment, but AV1 decode using software, for example, using VLC on an M1 MacBook Air worked absolutely fine. Used less than 25% of the CPU. In fact, it was using the four high performance cores and they were each tickling along at you know, five, 10% each. So that worked without putting a major strain on the, uh, on the MacBook Air and I was able to watch the movie absolutely fine. Hardware encode is now in the hands of consumers, albeit at the top end. So if you've got a GTX, if you've got an Intel Arc, if you've got a Radeon RX uh, 7000 series, then you can do hardware encode uh, there and client software using hardware encode has reached critical mass because of AV1 SVT. You've got Plex, as I said, FFmpeg, a, a handbrake, and also on they can now handle AV1. And if you've got AVX2 acceleration, then really it's going to be pretty usable uh, from today onwards without you having to spend lots of money on uh, extra hardware for the GPU. Okay, that's it. That's my look at AV1 and how it's now ready for mass adoption. I'd love to hear in the comments if you use AV1, if you're excited for the possibility for the future of what AV1 uh, offers, please do let me know. Let's start a discussion. If you enjoyed this video, please do give me a thumbs up. If you like these kind of videos, why not stick around by subscribing to the channel? Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.